OK, welcome back. So up until now, we've talked about this uh, linear system of equations, x dot equals ax plus bu. And we have some conditions on when this is controllable. So namely, we build this controllability matrix here. And we make sure that this has n linearly independent columns, where n is the dimension of my state space. And if this thing has a rank of n, then my system is controllable. And that means a lot of things. It means that I can steer x to any vector in Rn. I can arbitrarily place the eigenvalues of this closed loop system um, to anywhere I want. But I haven't really shown you why <coughs> the system is controllable, why all of those things are true if this is full rank. OK? And so there's a few things I'm going to do. I'm, you know, it, this is not meant to be an exhaustive class on controls. And so if you were taking a full controls class, I'd expect people to prove the controllability. I just want to give you an intuition for what is true, when, and how to use it. But to understand this a little better, I like to think about this in discrete time. xk plus 1 equals uh, axk plus buk. Now, remember, this A and this B are not the same as this A and this B. These are my discrete time matrices. If I was going to be really careful, I might put like a tilde or a hat on these. But that's going to take a lot of time, so I'm just going to write it out like this. And then what I want to do is I want to write down the impulse response. So the impulse response, which essentially means I'm going to kick the system in the U direction. And let's just assume that u is a single input channel, so like a, a scalar u. We're going to kick the system in, in uh, u, and then we're going to measure what happens to x. We're going to let that impulse ring through the system. OK, so we're going to have um, u at time 0 equals 1. So we're going to impulse u at time, sorry, at time 0. And then for all later times, we're just going to let it equal 0. So u1 equals 0, u2 equals 0, u3 equals 0, dot, dot, dot down to u uh, m equals 0. Okay? So this is an, impulsive, uh, an impulse in the input. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure how that rings through the system. Okay? So I'm also going to start with an initial condition x0 of 0. Okay? And so at, at x at time 0 is 0, and u at time 0 is 1, then x at time 1 is just b times 1. So x1 is just b. It's the vector b. So this is an impulse in u is a lot like an initial condition in the b direction. OK, then at time 2, x of time 2 is just a of x at time 1. So x at time 2 is just a times x at time 1, which is b. So I get a, x2 equals a, b. x3 is just a times x2 x3 is just a times x2, so it's a squared b, and so on and so forth. So all the way down here at xm, this equals a to the m minus 1 times b. Okay, And so this should at least give you some intuition for, for why this is an important uh, matrix, or at least this subspace, this, this subspace uh, generated by a and b is interesting. Because at least in discrete time, if I give the system a kick, so let's say I have a physical system like my pendulum, you know, maybe hanging down, and I literally hit it with a hammer, so I, I excite that thing and I see how it moves, I want to know that this input rings through the system and touches every state in Rn. Okay, if, if I hit my system with an impulse in U, and it rings through the system, and there are some directions in state space that are not touched by that B input, then there's no way I can possibly reach them with control. Okay, there will be some states in Rn that are just not controllable. They'll be perpendicular to the space that can be hit with control. So somehow this is the space that control can affect. And there's some linear algebra that I'm glossing over, but basically I just have to look at the first n minus 1 of these, uh, of these impulse response measurements. And as long as those hit all of the directions in Rn, then I can essentially arbitrarily control this with that uh, actuation input column vector b, okay? Um, which I think is, is pretty, pretty neat. Um, 
Okay, and, and this is actually what you would do in a real experiment. So most experiments of a physical system, maybe there is some continuous time dynamics, but in practice what you do is you measure it at a fixed delta t in time. So you actually collect data more like this. And so if you stacked it into a matrix, you could essentially see which directions in Rn are reached by an impulse in, in, your, in your system. Okay, I still haven't shown you how this directly ties um, to this matrix for the continuous time system, but I just wanted to give you this analogy of the impulse response in discrete time and essentially how uh, this gives you an idea that the states that are reachable with control are going to be in this subspace. Okay, thank you.